So good afternoon, Ms. Srishti uh, Patel, and good afternoon to the participants who are watching this live session. So welcome everyone to our enlightening session on microgravity and microbial behavior insights from space missions. This session uh, is designed to delve into the remarkable and world of microgravity, a unique state of near uh, weightlessness is experienced in space and its profound effects on microbial life. As we venture is beyond Earth atmosphere on various space missions, we encounter an environment that challenges our understanding of life and its fundamental biological processes. The study of microorganisms in these uh, conditions so not only paves the way for advancements in space exploration, but also it offers invaluable insights into microbial dynamics that have uh, implications here on Earth. In the realm of microgravity, some microbes behave is differently. Uh, this intriguing uh, phenomenon has been observed time and again through the rigorous scientific investigations abroad the International Space Station and other space missions. And microgravity suffers microbial growth and rates and gene expression and resistance to antibiotics and virulence and presenting unique challenges and opportunities for space travelers. Uh, these adaptations is a raise uh, so important questions about the resilience and the versatility of microorganisms and necessitate the innovative solutions to safeguard the health of astronauts during the prolonged space missions. And this session is aims to explore this adaptation, the underlying the mechanisms and driving them and their implications for the space travel and beyond. So before we start uh, Ms. Ms. Sushti Patil's session, I would like to give some short introduction about her. So we are thrilled to welcome Ms. Sushti S. Patil as our esteemed guest speaker for today's session. And Sushti is a fervent space microbiologist hailing from India and currently leaving a significant mark at Research Sat Private Limited. And uh, her journey is an inspired, inspiring a testament to the transformative power of security and the relevance the pursuit of dreams. And initially starting her career with a focus on environmental science and biodiversity. And so she was deeply involved in studying diatoms with a noble aim of Protecting Earth intricate the balance of life. However, uh, her boundless curiosity eventually propelled her towards the vast and mysterious cosmos and leading her to pivot towards a space life science and research. In her remarkable transition, uh, Susti has uh, amassed an impressive array of expertise in the fields of such as uh, life science research, remote sensing, GIS, GNSS and astrobiology. At uh, research set, she is at the forefront of designing and executing life science experiments in microgravity conditions using CubeSats. And working alongside uh, some of the uh, brightest minds in the field, and Suti is, uh, Suti is uh, delving deep into the complexities of space life, investigating its impact on human health and exploring the fascinating possibilities of life beyond our planet. Beyond her uh, groundbreaking research, is a Susti is a passionate advocate for the dissemination of space science knowledge and it's actively working to promote gender diversity within the space sector. And she is the character of the LinkedIn newsletter, is Gravity and Beyond, through which she uh, shares the critical, critical insights into space science and captivating a wide audience. Furthermore, Susti has uh, recently founded them, she is in space community, a pioneering initiative aimed at empowering the women and fostering in inclusivity in the space sector. Today, Sisti invites you to join here on the extraordinary journey of exploration into the limits of space life science, promising a session filled with enlightening insight and inspiring discoveries. At the end, I would like to introduce to the motto of Ms. Sisti Patil, exploring the infinity in fresh and empowering the individual. So I would like to hand over the session to Ms. Susti Patel and also thanks a lot for joining us today and over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for ma'am 
for this warm introduction and it's a pleasure to be here with you all today and i'd like to express my like gratitude to tms tech solutions and mastering up this initiative and for everyone like it's in, always intriguing to provide different insights from space so yeah without further ado i think we can delve into our session I guess there is some network issue just a second so i'll start my presentation uh, let's dive this into our session so as we embark on this journey um, i would also like to tell uh, as ma'am has already tell about my introduction i am srishti patil from rai city gondia maharashtra and currently i'm working as a space microbiologist at research sat and Uh, there are my work centers around designing and development of life science experiments for space missions i've been associated with uh, three missions for now uh, one with balloon launch and two with suborbital launch missions along with this i run a community of uh, a network which called she in space which focuses on the women empowerment women encouragement towards space so this network uh, we would like to educate women to choose stem fields and research to the uh, and research in that field and reach to the higher positions so coming from an environment and biodiversity background i was always fascinated by exploring the ecosystem or the living mysteries of our earth and beyond earth and uh, and i was always curious to understand the uh, Uh, intricate interactions between living organisms and their environment especially uh, space environment and today i was going to discuss one of the important aspects of this journey uh, that is interaction of microbes with space environment so how they be behave in space how they live in space how they survive in space by sharing some of the insights from space missions So before starting our topic I would like to share one of my favorite a quote from Laurel Clark she says the microgravity or the very very low amount of gravity that we have up in space for some changes in different processes it force changes in us as human being and this quote beautifully encapsulates the essence of our topic today highlighting the profound impact of microgravity on both biological and physiological processes so let's embark on the concept of microgravity so microgravity refers to the condition emerges by an object in free fall in this state gravitational force are greatly reduced resulting in near weightless environment which exerts a profound effect on various biological processes with the actual space environment we can even stimulate this microgravity conditions by 
parabolic flights, uh, drop towers, and space station. So now we have a basic understanding of microgravity. Let's ship on to the focus or to explore how this unique environment influence our biological system. So when we say biological system, let's take a moment to appreciate the remarkable world of microbes. So one of the important component of our ecosystem, of our body, microbes, which include bacteria, fungi, and other organisms, which, which cannot see by our naked eye, they are ubiquitous in almost every environment on Earth, from depth of ocean to the soil beneath our feet. And with all this, in, uh, like the interesting microbes, we can also found in space. And yes, we can even found in space. Despite all their uh, small size, uh, uh, in fact, in human body, uh, the microorganisms, they are the vast community present in our body. Bacteria and fungi thrive in and on just um, about uh, like everything around us from air we breathe to food we eat. So this symbiotic relationship between humans and microbes, this underscores that uh, the interconnectedness of life on earth and even beyond. So let's explore why studying this microbe in space is important. So as we all know, even in case of Indian space sector research, we know very little about uh, the astrobiology field. And with this knowledge, even we have a lesser data, a lesser amount of understanding about how microorganisms adapt to space conditions. So by studying microbes in space, it offers us a, a unique opportunity to understand how they respond and how they adapt to such harsh condition, which is filled with wetlessness or the cosmic radiations. So different studies shows that microorganism, it exhibits the behavioral change in space and uh, it changes the environment based on uh, the interaction uh, which is doing with the microbes and environment. Uh, uh, it regulates the process of nutrient uptake, waste removal. So by gathering insights uh, into microbial behavior in space, we can even address the critical questions related to crew health, uh, like spacecraft contaminations, sustainability of life support systems uh, during long duration space missions, they help us even uh, like providing the pharmaceutical or biotechnological solutions in the field of uh, in the field like space medicines. So moving forward, let's talk about microbes in microgravity. What are the most essential changes we observe during space mission? So we observe increased growth, smaller lag phase, uh, reduced shear forces. Contaminate, no contamination, no sedimentation, uh, no convection forces, a very reduced rate of diffusions. And while we dig deeper into this specific adaptation, we prominently see uh, in microbes during microgravity exposure, the first uh, trigger we observe in is the changes in microbial growth phase as well as in their physiology such as changes in size, shape, their motility structure as well. So microgravity, it also triggers the genetic alterations, like the gene alterations. It mutates in space, indicating changes in their metabolic as well as stress response mechanism. Uh, during ISS mission, it was found that the bacteria had an increased adaptation uh, rate of higher antibiotic concentration with upregulation. So gene uh, which relates to stress response or it activates the mechanism related to oxidative stress or the saturations, it was studied in ISS space missions. So this study was mostly uh, even observed in the culture like E. coli species of bacteria. In addition to this understanding, like how microgravity affects the behavior, it is crucial to consider the potential implication of crew health 
or the spacecraft safety. And one, uh, one of this particular concern is virulence in microbes, which, is, which are exposed in space environment. And yes, microgravity does induce virulence characteristics in microbes and different uh, like studies during ISS missions even confirms that. Even the microbes like E. coli or Salmonella, specifically Salmonella enterica, Staphylococcus or Pseudomonas species, they do show the virulence characteristics in space while uh, they are in uh, International Space Station studies. So next we discuss the adaptation in gene expression pattern. In Biosafety Lab 2 of ISS, uh, there are different pathogens which are isolated and collected from different surfaces of ISS. And the whole genome sequencing even was uh, considered was done in uh, during ISS mission experiments. And it was analyzed during the whole genome sequencing about uh, seven different strains. And during that process, even a, a novel mi microorganism was found named uh, Calamela. And this kind of genetic expressions which are found, it helps them um, to survive in harsh condition, to initiate the virulence factors, and so on. Even E. coli is also studied and observed that about 430 genes were altered in space environment. Uh, with the help of this, even this, uh, the genetic changes which they show, which they observe, was response for starvation, redirection of metabolism, response to multiple stress conditions, and, uh, and different uh, conditions. While go, we go through their metabolic pathways to adopt certain condition with a major adaptation of biofilm formation. Microbes are often discovered on like the interface of space station components, different hardwares, and biofilm formation has been seen on those hardwares, which causes damage, the other technical issues. So many microbes, especially uh, Acinetobacter species or Pseudomonas or E. coli, even yeast show biofilm formation. And this kind of structure helps them to increase the antibiotic resistance in the organism. And thus, understanding these changes in the adaptation of microbes, which is really crucial to maintain uh, the safer environment for astronauts during long duration space missions. Now let's move to space missions. The earliest microbial space and uh, like the experiment was held in 1969 during Apollo 11 missions. And um, the mission was studying the microbes. They exposed those microbes and study if, how they will survive in space, how they adapt to those conditions. And they even found out the first initial experiment that only the enclosed or protected samples survive in space, uh, like uh, the samples of E. coli or bacillus or even type 3 poliovirus uh, the protected samples were survived in space condition. Then comes the Perseus mission, which is in 1999 at Mie Station, where they have found the effect of uh, UV radiation on fungal spores or different bacterial species. So coming to next expedition, in expedition 16, uh, the whole genome uh, sequence was done initially in International Space Station. And it is found out that different novel microbes or genomic characteristics were observed in these missions. Uh, different adaptations in, in genes were observed. Uh, different fungal and bacterial species were observed to see how they survive in UV radiation, how they survive in nutrient depleting environment. So yeah, this is all about Expedition 16 in 2007. When we come closer uh, from last year in SpaceX Crew 6 missions, where the virulence or stress uh, response will be studied of like uh, different bacterial species. And it is uh, proof 
uh, it is like proven in this mission that uh, yes, bacteria do show the virulence characteristics in space. Coming to the other mission, Boeing Starliner 1, in this year, like in February, it was great missions. And uh, yes, by coming years, our experiments are more advanced, uh, more complex. And here in this mission, we have studied uh, how the fungus or bacteria are uh, sporulating in space, whether they show the sporulation, how they grow. And it is shown that the enhanced growth rate of fungi or bacteria, the sporulation was observed, uh, followed by Exium mission AX1 2024, which has happened recently, where even more complex studies was happened from the studies of microbiology, where stem cells were studied, to check the microbiome response to human health, how these cells uh, behave, how the cell proliferate uh, in space condition, how they respond to long duration space mission, and how even the aging uh, in space happen. So the results are soon coming uh, in, but uh, the missions were really interesting and intriguing to study for the future uh, pharmaceutical or scientific uh, research foundational studies to be understood. So microorganisms are like really important and its study offers a multifaceted opportunities to explore its behavior, which holds an immense, uh, like the significance of space and uh, exploration. So while doing this, there are like future directions of the studies. First is microbes like microbes are really beneficial for production of energy as a method of sustainable living uh, in the form of microbial fuel cell in future. So this method could help us in future to power spacecrafts, mission control, or even various life support system if we are planning to civilize uh, in Mars or we, if we are planning to go uh, like for a long duration uh, space missions. The next come is biomining. So it's an, uh, I must say it's an environment friendly and an alternative to physical or chemical mineral process, which we are doing from the histories, like from the past. Uh, and this method can even extract minerals from different planets environment. So basically here in biomining, uh, even specific organisms, they secrete uh, some kind of organic um, acid and some metal binding compound that uh, imbibes and that dissolves that metal, allowing them to uh, you know, easily extract from the particular environment. Then comes the biotherapeutics. Uh, the risk, uh, like the risk that long duration missions it poses for crew members, uh, it is not yet clearly like understood how uh, they they are going to sustain for long duration. But research are still going on on microbials. So uh, assume that uh, an astronaut GI tract. So if we can uh, develop some kind of prebiotics to maintain those conditions to maintain a, uh, a healthy astronaut health or or even in case of other diseases if we can uh, provide different uh, drugs to combat different diseases which are related to space missions we will be providing the biotherapeutics solutions for further missions then comes the planetary protection part so as we all know about uh, like due to biofilm formations, many spacecraft components, they destroy, like even it affects the, the surrounding environment where uh, our samples, where the um, like microbe exposed in space environment. So by this study, we can even help to design the and strategize the mitigation process. And even, it, uh, even this studies help in policy building for space sustainability to protect like the space or even our planet itself. So yeah, like through different collaborative research efforts, we can even 
unlock the potential of microbial science uh, to advance our understanding of space environment and uh, like protect and pull all the safer and more sustainable space missions. So in closing my remark, as a profound like quote by Arthur Clarke, it says two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe or we are not. And they both are equally terrifying. And I believe this quote has always made me uh, like it, it motivates me or it helps me to explore more. Uh, it helps me to inspire and uh, look around, look for different answers in space. So even this quote inspires and unites us as an explorer of the cosmos. So yeah, these are the references of my, uh, the examples or different missions that I have provided uh, in this sessions. And if you would like to ask or catch me or connect with me, uh, this is my email and you can even contact me via LinkedIn. I'm very active in LinkedIn and you can even follow or uh, She in Space uh, community as well. You can even join She in Space community and some interesting space uh, missions or uh, how women can empower, how women empowerment will be happen is also be discussed in She in Space. So. Thank you for all your attention and I'll be happy to answer your question. I'll do my best to address them. Thank you so much. Yeah, hi ma'am. So thank you, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Hello ma'am. Yeah, okay. So ma I have some questions here. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, so first question, uh, how does the long-term exposure to microgravity affect microbial communities structure and function? So, uh, when we say microgravity, there are different, uh, you can say, factors that affects microgravity or the organisms. When we say wetlessness, there is no convection force. There is no shear force to balance out one organism in a particular way. So no convection forces, no shear forces, very re reduced forces and very uh, reduced, like the environment affects the nutrient flow, even our nutrient flow. When we consider microbes, microbes, uh, like the nutrient flow also affect uh, in microbial conditions uh, in their system. So that's why the effect, uh, the motility effect or the shape and size, we like different shape and size we observed in space. Yeah, okay. So what are the uh, genetic mechanisms behind the increased virulence and antibiotic resistance of certain microbes in microgravity? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, sure. So what are the genetic mechanisms behind the increased virulence and antibiotic resistance of certain microbes in microgravity? Okay, so uh, still there is like a very less data, but uh, different genome sequencing were done uh, in International uh, Space Station. And uh, there are a few gen genes which are responsible for the virulence characteristics. And those genes will, will be altered or muted. Certain genes will be uh, even expressed more. That's why the virulence characteristics we see. Okay. Uh, can microgravity be utilized to develop the novel antimicrobial compounds or vaccines? Yeah, yeah, it will be helpful for uh, determining or providing a different kind of like a novel cutting edge solutions. See, uh, uh, to give an example, even uh, we say proteins. 
so on earth proteins the structure or the compactness of proteins it is different on earth but when we expose those proteins in microgravity condition they see a very solid compact structure very a different kind of crystallization that happens in space even uh, different pharmaceutical companies say space pharmas uh, the company it also uh, search uh, protein crystallization in space and we observe that uh, the proteins are crystallizes more efficiently more effectively in space so if proteins are crystallizing effectively in space we can even generate effective uh, apis for drug deliveries product drug systems that's why for space medicine or for bio therapeutics uh, we can say delivery solution uh, microgravity can be a any like can be one of the uh, a good uh, platform or a blue, a good environment to search on or to work on Yeah, okay thank you ma'am so uh, how can uh, insights from microbial behavior in microgravity inform the search of extraterrestrial life uh, can you repeat this question uh, how can the insights from microbial behavior in microgravity inform the search of extraterrestrial life okay so uh, if we are considering the microbial behavior in space condition or in iss condition uh, we will be having a fundamental understanding of how a certain kind of micro behave in those condition and based on that we can even predict a uh, different like the environment from other planet or from other solar system or from other space environment how the environment is and how um, like how might those micro behave in certain conditions so th- that would be a fundamental uh, understanding for us to know how extraterrestrial might uh, be there okay so what are the uh, implications of microgravity induced microbial changes for close to loop life support the systems in long duration space missions so uh, it depends on dif- what kind of uh, like hypothesis or what kind of uh, product or research we want but okay. uh, they'll definitely be helpful uh, if we are trying the closed loop system to understand their behavior okay then what role can synthetic biology play in uh, mitigating the risk associated with the microbial behavior in microgravity you synthetic biology is a like an amazing field to work on and it will definitely help us um, advancing the products which we want from microgravity research or microbial research say uh, uh, if like from synthetic gra- like from synthetic biology if we uh, if will be help to uh, engineer some microbes to uh, say maintain fuel system like to maintain the energy flow uh, for microbial fuel cells such kind of thing okay uh, so okay, this is my final question uh, how do microgravity conditions affect the quorum sensing and biofilm information capabilities of bacteria and what are the potential consequences for human health and space craft integrity can you repeat this question i guess yeah sure, sure, sure. how do microgravity conditions affect the quorum sensing and biofilm formation capabilities of bacteria and uh, what are the potential conse- consequences of our human health and space craft integrity so when we consider the biofilms uh, it is associated with uh, uh, 
the technical difficulties because when uh, we see the for, like the the structure or the mat of microbes on that system it will definitely going to affect those system even uh, because uh, if if bioformation is happening even we can see the virulence characteristics as well which will be even affecting the astronauts so it will be a dangerous for uh, the environment the considered environment where they are formed but to mitigate that a proper procedure needs to be done proper uh, like mitigating strategies needs to be done to uh, like mitigate those biofilms from uh, the surface or the considered environment yeah okay okay ma'am so thank you for the answers so the answers are very useful i hope the access and uh, the, the, the the participants can understand about that so, so finally so on behalf of our organization and all the participants of today's session on uh, microgravity and microbial behavior insight from space mission we extend our heartfelt gratitude to uh, ms shashti patel for her enlightening session and inspiring inspiring presentation ms patel's this passion for uh, space microbiology and her commitment uh, to advancing our understanding of microbial life in microgravity have not only captivated our audience but also sparked a deeper interest in the potential of space life sciences her dedication to her uh, research at research sat so private limited and her efforts to pioneer life science experiments in microgravity conditions using cube sats have provided us with invaluable insights into the complexities of space life and its impact on human health and furthermore we would like to express our admiration for ms patel's advocacy for gender diversity within the space sector and her initiative in creating the she in space community her actions are a testament to her belief in the power of inclusion and diversity in driving innovation and discovery by sharing her journey and the challenges uh, she has overcome ms patel has undoubtedly inspired many and especially women and girls to pursue their dreams in space science and beyond her work serves as the beacon of hope and a reminder of the impact one individual have in breaking barriers and fostering an inclusive environment where all voices are heard and valued in closing we thank uh, ms sushi for her generous contribution of time and expertise to our session her work is a brilliant example of how curiosity perseverance and a dedication to making a difference can lead a uh, lead to a significant advancement in science and create a more inclusive space for future generations we are profoundly grateful for the opportunity to learn from her experiences and insights and we look forward to following her continued achievements in space microbiology and her efforts towards empowering women in the space sector so thank you mr steve patel for joining us on the extraordinary journey of exploration and discovery so thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you so much for having me you have a great day yeah thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you